Hello everyone. In this video, I will tell you about pulp stones. Pulp stones are discrete calcifications that form within the pulp chamber. They may lie free within the pulp or adhere to the chamber wall or they may even become embedded in dentin. Pulp stones that are sufficiently large, that is, greater than approximately 200 microns in maximum diameter, may be detected on bite wing or periapical radiograph. Following conditions may lead to formation of pulp stones. First, it may be seen in idiopathic cases. Second, aging. Third, due to fluoride supplementation. Fourth, hypervitaminosis D. And in certain genetic disorders like dentine dysplasia, dentinogenesis imperfecta, Wood syndrome, etc. Pulp stones can be classified based on morphology and location. So based on morphology, pulp stones can be classified as denticles, that is true pulp stone, pulp stones or false pulp stones. And third one is diffuse linear calcification, also known as amorphous pulp stones. Based on location, pulp stones can be classified as free, attached and embedded. All the pulpal calcifications, that is all the pulp stones, start out as free bodies within the pulpal tissue. But with time, as the dentine thickness increases due to continuous deposition of dentine, then many of these stones may become attached and later on they will become embedded in the dentinal wall of the pulp chamber. So free, attached and embedded are different stages of the same pulp stone in its life cycle. A single tooth may have 1 to 12 or even more pulp stones. Pulp stones are more common in coronal pulp chamber as compared to the radicular pulp. Let's now see the true pulp stones. True pulp stones form as a result of epithelial mesenchymal interaction within the developing pulp. So what happens is that the epithelial strands from either the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath or from the cervical extension of the enamel organ. This will migrate into the pulp chamber adjacent to the furcation or at the apical end of the incomplete roots. So when these epithelial strands migrate into the pulp, then these will induce odontoblastic differentiation of the surrounding mesenchyme, that is the dental papilla. And these epithelial strands form the core of the denticle, that is the true pulp stones. The true pulp stones have a central cavity which is filled with these epithelial remnants and this stone is surrounded peripherally by odontoblast. So what happens is once the odontoblasts are differentiated from the mesenchymal cells of dental papilla, they will deposit tubular dentin which resembles the normal dentin. True pulp stones are initially thimble shaped but with age as the time passes, the cells in the central cavity that is the epithelial cells, they will degenerate and the surrounding dentin shell it will become smooth due to continuous deposition of the dentine by odontoblasts. The true pulp stones usually will form before root completion and they are usually located in the radicular pulp and in furcation area. Let's now see the false pulp stones. These are compact degenerative masses of calcified tissue. False pulp stones are formed from degenerating cells of the pulp that mineralize. So they are formed around a central nidus of pulpal tissue. For example, such pulp stones that is false pulp stones may form around collagen fibril or ground substance or necrotic cell remnants. And the various stages of the false pulp stone formation include first the degenerating cell in the pulp or the cell nests are first enclosed by concentrically arranged fibers. These fibers then get impregnated with mineral salts and then such calcified increments are added continuously. So a laminated structure will form due to layer by layer deposition of this mineralized structure. The false pulp stones are more common in coronal part of the pulp and they have a concentric or radial or lamellar pattern. Let's now see the diffuse linear calcifications. Now these diffuse linear calcifications do not demonstrate lamellar organization which is seen in false pulp stones. Also they do not show tubular organization of the true pulp stones. 
they usually will form around apically located blood vessels and nerves and they are often parallel to the vasculature so they are seen in the radicular pulp and they are seen as linear calcifications which are oriented parallel to the vessels so the collagen bundles of the vascular and neural sheath of old pulp are usually the loci of calcification and such calcifications exhibit area of fine fibrillar and irregular calcification and their frequency will increase with age so the discrete calcification will be seen more in older teeth as compared to a younger tooth and true pulp stone was seen in an incomplete root so that is more common in younger tooth so i hope the concept of pulp stones is clear and if you do find it helpful do like comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe thank you